What up, what up, what up, what up? It's me, L Teddy 27. Good as night, dude. Right about the hood. Oh, dear God. I'm already eating a drink. Look at the damn mess. Just a damn mess. Please no. And yes, please no. What up, 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 what's good, people? What is up? What is up? What is up? I am back in the saddle. Back in the saddle. Um, I think this is our first review of 2021. Happy New Year. Happy 2021. Everybody, once again, big shout out to all of you subscribers and everything. Wonderful birthday surprises you all gave me. So grateful, appreciative, all of that good jazz, all of that good stuff. Love, love, love y'all. Um, this is going to be our review, though, for Chasing Atlanta. This is season four. It is episode nine. It is entitled The Blame Game. Now, we start off with this conversation that Oliver and um, Q are having. You know, Lauren is there. Travis is hosting the, the conversation or whatever. You know, there was a lot of back and forth. There was still a lot of talking in circles, talking about things that we didn't know about, alluding to things, mentioning things that we just... Didn't, don't remember. I, uh, Oliver, Oliver's. Let me tell you what, at least what came off on camera. What came off on camera was Oliver was one of those people who you want to fuck up. And the reason that I, at least me, the, he came off as one of those people who, when you confront them about a situation or you have this type of sit down, they always want to take. Um, they always want to take ownership. Or accountability for something never apologizing and they get confused because they think that owning up to something or becoming accountable for something is actually them um, uh, apologizing or making it right if you slap me and I say hey you slap me and you say oh you know what I did slap you I'll take ownership of that I I'll take accountability for that I did slap you but never follow that up by saying you know what I take ownership, um, even though I take ownership of it, let me apologize for it. Because that's something that I did. It hurt you. It wronged you. I shouldn't have done it. And I, 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 you don't have to worry about me doing that again. I am eternally remorseful and apologetic for that. Please accept my apology because I do not want to wrong you in that way anymore. See, that's what you have to do. You have to go the step further and not just apologize. I mean, not just take ownership or accountability. You got to apologize. You have to literally make it right you can't just say oh yeah i did do that oh no bitch that's why we here i know you did that you take the ownership and accountability i knew we knew that coming in that this is what the, you had to own this but i guess anyway they started explaining some situation with t.s madison and oliver just was not adding up he was saying this then saying that said oh i didn't see it oh i did see it oh i didn't see it ots saw it ots didn't know what was on the o i was like and if I was Q, I would, listen, I did not blame Q. When Q started to get more and more heated, I would have been more and more heated too. Because listening to this story, I was getting upset and I don't have nothing to do with it. Baby, I, they better than me. And this is why, and, and at a certain point, you got to start to look at, I start to look crazy at the Q, the person like Q, as opposed to the person like Oliver. Because see, people like Oliver are who they are. Baby, they will hurt you not acknowledge it and go on to hurt the next person and keep it moving because they are the type of people who are going to do any and everything they can to get a leg up he even said it. he said it looked like he was going to hurt and do whatever he could to you know forward his own cause and advance his own career professionally or whatever damn who it hurts people are who they are that's what Oliver is and so somebody like you you have to take stock in what you did and how you say to yourself you know what i'm not gonna put myself in that situation no more I see you fucking you are because they were talking about when we was at bullet number one, it shouldn't have happened at bullet number seven. Hey, boom, when you got to bullet number two or three, you should have shut that shit down. Nope, I ain't even going to let you get me to a bullet point number seven because I've removed you from my existence. I've removed you from my life and I'm not going to give you an opportunity to continue to hurt me. Period. Child. I mean, um, and then another thing that Oliver did, he basically, at one point, kind of surmised all of his fuck shit down to, well, I wasn't talking to you for a while, so I felt like that gave me, um, I felt like at that point it was open season for me to do whatever I wanted to do. Since we weren't talking anyway, I could do whatever and say whatever, and it is what it is. Now, 
Nope. Uh-uh. Nope. Couldn't be me. They seem to make up, but um, if it was me, we would become associates at that point. We wouldn't be brothers no more. We wouldn't be friends at that point. We'd be associates. I say, you know what? I'll be peaceable. We can be cordial. I will see you in the room. And but I'm not going. But I'm gonna do everything I can not to force myself to be in the same space with you anymore. We can be cordial. You ain't got to talk about me. I ain't got to talk about you. Guess what? I ain't gonna give you the opportunity to spread my business no more either. Because at this point, you're going to be spread lies because we ain't going to be that close no more. I just didn't understand. I mean, I would permanently distance myself from someone like an Oliver. But Q, if you like it, I love it. If it's good for you, it's great for me, honey. Did Lauren then, in her confessional, say something about a power of three threesome? I vomited in my mouth four or five times. What in the grotesque, filthy, fetish porn shit she got rolled around her head with the likes of... Oliver, I mean, you hitting the bear community, you hitting all of the people who go for the ball heads with Q, and then you hitting all the people who like the tea girl. That's uh, mm, that's a recipe for this. Please never let shit like that roll off your lips again, Lauren. Never. Ew. Listen, the way my gastrointestinal tract is set up, Lauren, it, it takes a lot for me to even see you on screen. And then when you pop off and let shit like that roll off your tongue just so effortlessly, you are really trying my GI tract right now. Really trying it. <sighs> shit about as bad as a good stomach virus. Child. Anyway, Troy then invites Dominique and Cameron to his studio. He's doing an interview with uh, one of his exes who's a rapper or something like that. And so they sit down, they chit chat about a lot of things going on. They talk about Oliver and Lauren being all over um, social media and our lives being reckless and just talking shit. Now, Dominique, I'm, I know that you're not new to the show. I know you didn't just come on the show and never seen the show. It's pretty much what Lauren and Oliver are. They're reckless. They say all kinds of reckless shit. And if you're going to be on the show with them or you're going to watch what they say, you either gonna have to take it on the chair, keep it moving, or real girls do real things. Girl, you can go on live, so can I, and lay them hoes out. That's how you gotta handle that. Either pay it no mind, keep it moving, or girl, you do what you do and lay a bitch out right on your own live. Girl. Anyway, I mean, he did have um some, you know, he threw up some jabs in the confessional. He just read the girls a little bit in the confessional. I was like, I see you, Dominic, girl. You're trying to give it to the girls in the confessional. But, you know, all of this talking back and forth about what they know. Because they've been doing that since before you was even on the show, um, Dominic. So you should be surprised. They also talk about Rico was in a um, car accident. You know, um, hope everything is good with him with that. Um, and then they discuss this all-white party that Travis is planning. It wasn't a whole lot that went on in that. Um, see, shouts out to Dominique. I see you doing your thing. You know, go on here, do your thing. I don't know about those color choices with the suits. But girl, I ain't mad at the girl. Do what you do. Make Get it how you live. I was glad to see Troy doing, you know, his little studio thing. But girl, don't the color of that suit. Had to try. Try. What was that? Puce? Lavender? Periwinkle? Try. Anyway. Um, we see Lauren shoot her music video. Q is in a music video. Lauren, was, I don't know if she was trying to flirt with Q or... I just... I can't with Lauren. I I told y'all. Mm, she tests my gastrointestinal tract. Like, she invokes irritable bowel syndrome. That's what Lauren invokes for me at this point. Fucking irritable bowel syndrome. I, I can't. Then they went to this uh, to the commercial break, right? So Imani Van Zapp came on. Now, Imani had a lot of words for Dominique. A lot of words. Now, Imani, I'm not saying that everything you said to him may not have been necessarily true and right. But it seems to me, Imani, in this video, you came off more like a bully. You came off more like you were hitting at low-hanging fruit. Because there's a whole lot of other people on this show who deserves fire and brimstone from heaven above. They deserve all of the venom that you have in your tongue. Because they really need to fix their shit. Dominique is way down on the list. It's way more people that you need to have way more smoke for. And when you did address these people, you gave them just a real light light. 
you ain't go in on these people like you went in on um Dominique. Girl, if you really trying to help him, you call him all kinds of clowns and shit. Girl, you did a bit much, Imani. And if Dominique wanted to, girl, he could read you down, honey. Because, girl, we all saw how that uh, makeup on your face was not matching that makeup on your, you know, neckline and everything. Girl, I ain't trying to give you too much, Imani. Love you down, honey. But it seems to me you had a lot of smoke for Dominique. Not that some of it is not deserving, because it is. But I don't feel like you go that hard on other people. Who need to be going hard on? Hello? Lauren deserve it. Oliver damn sure deserve it. And we know Kendra deserves it. And uh, Troy, everybody has deserved it. But I don't feel like you come you come at other people as hard as you did, Dominique. I don't, Dominique ain't my favorite person. But mm, that 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 was beneath you, um, Imani. Uh, that was beneath you. I ain't like that. That that was that would that didn't come off. That wasn't mm, I, I'm trying to choose my words. Um choose my words uh you know precisely mm, it came off i don't know it came off as like there was something extra behind how you came off him you need to clean that up honey. you need to get your life in order you need to fix your own shit with that with this last um shit you should do all that you want no nah, that wasn't cute you want cute this week money tighten up honey get it together Oliver then has a video shoot um, for this. Um, he said it caught him the visual he was doing for Monique Hart from RuPaul's Drag Race um, and some stuff I think for RuPaul or whatever. Dominic and his boyfriend came and um, they was dancing in the video. It was real cute, real cute. Dominic, you know, they was doing their little J-set, eight counts and stuff like that. I was like, get it, bitch. You know, they was out there doing the damn thing. It was real cute. I liked it. It was real cute, Dominic. And, um, I think it was his boyfriend. I forgot the boyfriend name. But um, I was observing. Y'all know I'm very observing. Observant, not observing. God, I sound like a retard. I was very observant when I was watching them dance and at different points in this section. Did I see what I thought I saw in those red sweatpants that Dominique's boyfriend had on at certain times? Like, I was looking real hard. I mean, it was going fast, but you know, these good eyes, honey. I think I saw something poking at me, and I was like, in those um, red sweatpants, Joe. I was looking, honey. I think I saw some things, honey. Moving on. I'll go back and slow it down and see if you see what I see. Do you see what I see? Yeah. Anyway, they did. They then um, talk about um, Travis's event and, you know, um, the all white event that Travis is going to have and the fact that he's invited everybody. And Oliver said, listen, before he has that event, I really need to have a sit down with um, Kendra so that we can get at least to a point where we ain't got to be friends. We ain't got to be, you know, um, bosom buddies. But at least we can sit in the same space and people don't have to worry about us tearing the shit up. That is what, um, and I agree with Dominique when he said, well, y'all just can't be throwing jabs at each other. And I think a lot of times, um, Oliver, you do sometimes gaslight situations like, not just Oliver, Kendra as well, you know, the girls, when the girls get together, a lot of times, black gay men a lot of times don't know, especially when you're younger, you don't know how to sit in a room with each other without throwing shade like that is a lost art form can we just sit down in a room laugh joke and the laughs and jokes not be about each other we could throw jabs at people other people that's not there and you know things we see in the news or on tv or maybe old situations involving other but can we not you know sit in a room and just always be ready be on go to throw the quick read and the three quick jab because a lot of times that does because a lot of times you may say something that you don't think is going to hurt this person that bad but when they receive it it just takes them to another level and that's how situations happen so i was with kind of, i was kind of with dominique on that um rico then had a meet up sit down with camera and they talked and they discussed a lot of serious stuff he talked about his accident breaking up with his boyfriend um, Cameron discussed a recent health scare that he had because he had a previous bout with cancer and they're thinking that he may have another mass that might, you know, that he has to have a biopsy to see if it's cancerous um, and things like that. So um, um, definitely um, prayer cloths out and prayers going up for them. Hopefully um, their situations work out. Um, we'll definitely keep you all in our prayers. Um, and then we see Kendra and Wayne having this music video. They shot two videos in a day and afterwards they sat out and they discussed um the potential for Kendra to be going back to jail. So my thing about it is, is this, I really feel like there's a lot in that situation with Kendra that we don't know because when you go to jail and you get out of jail, they have stipulations. They have things that they want you to do or not do 
so you can keep yourself out of jail. If they are potentially thinking about sending you back to jail, one, well, like I said, is it because maybe you did something you weren't supposed to do and now they're th you're thinking about maybe you violated a parole or something like that? Or is this or is this just a continuation of the um, the um, trial from before or the uh, case you already had open before? Um, she talked about um, a lot of um, trans women being role models to her and uh, her being role models to them. But in her growing and things on this show, and but you got to Sometimes in life, you, especially when you're in this type of platform, Kendra, you want to be able to have that slow growth that everybody else has. But because of your specific situation, who you specifically are, you can't have that. Sometimes you got to grow real fast. Sometimes your situation doesn't call for you to have this slow growth. Sometimes you got to grow real fast and do immediate change and not go back. And I think that's kind of where Kendra needs to go. You do see some changes in her, but you got to change more and you may have to do that more rapidly and you need people around you i understand wayne the pain is there day one whatever and i'm glad for that but you also start to have to have to start to surround yourself with people who are going to who are maybe above where you are and give you something to aspire to and i ain't talking about the people on this show and i when you're saying when i'm saying aspire to don't aspire to them because maybe it looks like they're doing well people who truly are doing well internally morally in terms of their character and stuff like that to help you out anyway all right so y'all um yeah i had a whole snafu in my whole <laughs> watching of this show so yeah this is the part where i thought the show was over because it was like 14 hours long and then instead of it uh, uh, long story short i forgot about the last segment so i had to i was getting ready to um edit and then I some said go back and look at the episode and I went back and look at the episode it was a whole nother 10 minutes I said oh you guys so in this last 10 minutes of the episode that I clearly forgot all about we'll edit this in some kind of way um yeah um Kendra and Wayne are supposed to be going to go meet up with Troy to talk it out and stuff like that Cameron ends up coming Troy ain't come because he claimed he had to work he sent some video. Now, my first thought was, y'all got production out here. Cameras is cold. This, that, and the third. Troy, you knew you had to go to work. You knew you couldn't get off work. Why you ain't just call and say, hey, girl, I'm not going to be able to make it. We need to reschedule. See, that's the kind of shit now. Troy, love you down, honey. Y'all know I don't have no problem with Troy. I don't have no, I don't, you know, but Troy. Troy. Troy, girl. Girl, Troy. You're not going to have me riding all the way out, wasting gas and all that kind of stuff, sitting out in the cold. And you could have just lobbed me a phone call and said, hey, girl, I'm not going to be able to make it. We can meet some other time. That's that's disrespectful. That's disrespectful of people's time. That's disrespectful of people's energy. And, I, and you can't get mad if people be feeling some kind of way and it's like, girl, fuck you, because you, that's disrespectful of people's time. Just like your time is important, other people's time um, is important, too. I would That would have pissed me off. I'm just saying if it was me. Then, to add insult to injury, you had Cameron come out there and play some video that he had recorded for them. And see, that's a recipe for a disaster because if you truly want to have discourse and dialogue and we want to have this conversation, but we're, you know, trying to work out, we whatever we're trying to work out, you know, how they say work out your soul salvation, that is, there has to be dialogue, not a monologue, but dialogue, okay? And so when you play this video, it sounds like someone who's talking at someone, not having a conversation where we're truly hearing each other or not hearing, but listening to each other. Because I always say hearing anybody with functional ears can hear because the word ear is in word here. But when you're listening to people, that goes a little step further. That goes where you are, you know, cognitively reasoning and so forth. And you truly receive what people are saying and, you know, decide on how you're going to move afterwards. And so in this whole situation, Kendra wasn't given the opportunity to have that. You basically made a video talking, you know, you know, at her instead of truly having a conversation. Now, we only saw parts of the video, but it didn't seem like there was any um, contrition or remorse for maybe what you had done. Um, and maybe I overlooked it because I was still kind of, you know, my head was still spinning at the fact that I had 10 more minutes of this video to watch it, you guys. Anyway, so, but that, that it was just a recipe for a disaster. That didn't go over well. That wasn't a good look, Troy. That was not a good look. Um, now, 
Cameron then brings up Lauren and how she's been talking um, shit all over social media and so forth. And Kendra, you know, I let me say this now. Kendra, a lot of times, be out of order, out of pocket. She be saying all kinds of stuff. But this conversation that Kendra was having about Lauren, I was with her a thousand percent on it. I was like, you know what? Kendra is perfectly right. I ain't going to say perfectly right, but I really felt what she was saying when she was speaking on Lauren and things like that. I, I listen. I I, t- I already told you. I don't know that I see any saving qualities in a person like Lauren, but that's a whole nother um conversation for a whole nother day. But um, Kendra basically said, "Listen, I don't. You know, I tried to you know come in being respectful, but it gets to a point where, girl, yeah, I came in being respectful, but at, at a certain time, girl, we all in this together. We all on the same show, all on the same show. So I ain't gonna keep." bowing down and, you know, kissing the rain, girl, we all here together, girl, that, those days are over. And I think that on sometimes you see that on shows where people try to say, oh, we the OGs, oh, we've been here longer, so you better respect that. Yeah, there might be a little bit of that at the beginning, but after a certain time, that you just can't keep saying that. That shit gets old, girl, we all in this together. How about that? Anyway, but that was that conversation. That was the whole episode. It went off from there. I'm curious as to what this um, white party is going to bring. We'll see y'all. Y'all know when y'all get these girls in the same room, honey. Um, that's a recipe for disaster. That's all I got for y'all. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Let's get in the comment section. And do what we do. Ah, God. About what we saw. Until next time, that's all I got for y'all. Thank y'all for coming. Y'all drive safely. I'm out.